It's Biodome Day in Montreal! I'm so happy to have come here. It looks really impressive. Like all different climate control things for the penguins. You don't get that very much. So I'm hoping my expectations aren't too high. They're pretty high at the moment. Let's go and have a look. So the Biodome has a central hub and all the little areas stretch off out of it. So you end up back in the middle. So it's easy to find your way around. We've been recommended by one of the staff members to download an app. Which I'm just putting on our phone now. I don't know, I think we're going to start possibly in tropical rainforest when we carry on. There's a group of school kids here. I think we're going to try and avoid which one they're in so we're not, it's not too loud. And they're kind of going to my bed. I think we might start in the tropical rainforest. That sound good? Yeah. So we're going to start over here in the tropical rainforest. I think then work our way around Maple Forest, Gulf of St. Lawrence, Labrador Coast, and the subarctic region. I think that's going to be the most interesting one because where the penguins are, it's all climate control to make it cold in there. So it's South and Central America. I heard a McCall already. I see McCalls already and it is warm in here. I'm loving the bits of enrichment they have among the trees there. I think they're training the tamarind to go into the cages probably for veterinary treatment and moving. They're touch trained with the balls they're hanging. Yeah, they get a treat a reward every time they touch the ball. <laughs> the app's really good, it has a little icon standing where all the animals are and if you click on it, it tells you the plants and the animals in a location. The <laughs> Wi-Fi isn't really good here. Yeah, the Wi-Fi's not the best, we can't get it when we're actually in the dome, we have to come back to the entrance to get this up. And then if you want to know a bit more, there's more about it. That's really nice to what they eat. What well, eats them. <laughs> it's really informative, I like that. These are the kind of items that are really impressive, and this is why I think the one in Prague and Paris just weren't quite the highest standard. It's close to what I experienced in Burger. It's lovely when they actually keep the humidity high. There's like small amounts of wind in here. The heat's high. It rains to keep everything very natural. It's amazing. Eternal bit we just walked through, fat enclosure on both sides. You can't get the absolute to see what species it was. I'm assuming the same on both sides, and they had two enclosures felt like you were walking through a cave with the bats around you. Really atmospheric. So we came out of the rainforest at the very top onto a mezzanine. There's a kind of bio attraction over there which I think is for children, which is where the school kids are currently at. And although you can't get into it, we have got the maple forest behind that we're above. And you can see it all in its autumn colours. So I think that might be the next one we go into. But I'm going to walk around the rest up here first. So the rainforest is sealed off to create its own climate, and so with the polar region one. Then because the maple forest and the gulf over there, are the correct climate for the environment that is open to the temperature of the dome itself but when they're tropical or polar they are properly sealed off so they can control the climate and environment inside which so I think is absolutely amazing so this is the Gulf of St Lawrence we can see it from above in the mezzanine there are some massive fish in here 
I mean, you can just see an Ida there to give you a rough idea of scale, looking how big an Ida is. And we saw some tern flying around a moment ago. It looks really impressive in there. We have a game we have to manage the biodome. It shows you problems and you fix them. Over here looks bad. Time has run out. Oh no. Water level is too high in one of the aquariums. We need to do a water outlet valve. Increase the duration by seven hours. Analyze. Chemist? I don't know, I thought chemist, but it could be wrong. Ah, yeah. We did an excellent job though, we did good. That's a fun little game for the kids to get them involved with the biodome. And there's also over there saying um, they have a lot of success with breeding, which is a good sign as well. It's fake eggs, but like, this is... King penguin. King penguin. Mosho Royal. Yeah. Come on, Isa. Puffin. Puffin. Chan. 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 This one is the Maple Forest. We have our honours. It's going fast. I want the light trout. Uh, they are two carnivorous animals. They will plant flower. In the wild, they will mainly feed from fishes, but they will also hunt waterfalls, ducklings, uh, small rodents, muskrats. Why is it not not easy? It's not not easy. So it's one of the very, very rare animals that has really a life vivant, and it's only one time per year. <laughs> so you are lucky to be here during the feeding time because it's one of the very rare occasions here at the Biodome that we give live praise to our animals. Uh, this is really an exception. Usually we give them already dead prey. So we just saw the otter feeding time and the otter here and one of the birds are the only two animals in the whole place to give them live prey. So there's live fish put in there. It's very unusual, and the reason is the two animals that get given live prey are rescue animals from the wild, and they simply either won't eat or reduce the amount they eat if they are just given or eat dead prey. So for their own well-being, it's necessary to give them living food, which is very rare. I've never encountered that in a zoo before. You can see you have proper hunting for these fish. We okay. found there's an augmented reality thing. So we press that. Yeah, with this block here. There's a wolf. He's I know, this appeared. The price is in beta, still testing it. It's not quite as good as the whale we had at a uh, Prague Museum. But quite animated still. Yeah. Needs a little bit of work still, but kind of cool. The wood ducks. Have a pumpkin! And they lucky wood ducks. We have raccoons. You enter a beaver dam. And they've got a camera over there so you can see the beavers sleeping. So they're having their snoozies, you can see one here in the corner, there's a beaver, and this is the beaver's tank. That's amazing. And you can see in that tank the little cave entrance to where they sleep, just over there, there's a straw in it, and that obviously takes them up into a little chamber where they're sleeping in there. There's a cute little quiz about how lynx are adapted to the winter, and then there's a video of like a mummy lynx with her babies. The app's really cool. Because we can't see the lynx currently, but it does have a very nice enclosure. There's like a wire frame that goes along the top. I'm assuming it's for feeding, so it has to the meat be put on hung on there and moved along to give it more of a sense of pumping. Go for St. Lawrence. Oh, I'm sure. It's really impressive. Yeah. 
snack. That's that's funny. There's like a whole slightly below ground section where you can just see the tanks. And some of the fish in here are incredible. And look at him up there. I don't quite realize how big they are, they're massive. Oh, look. Feel people again. Feel people. It's really grumpy. Look, 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 look this one. And what are the fish called? They're all people. I'm coming out of the care home. I really like the people like doing walks, with walking sticks together. It's like them. Yeah. Oh, this one's fallen behind, bless him. Oh no, you've really fallen behind. Oh no. These are much more energetic. Hello. Is this not too small for them? They don't have brains, I don't think they care. <laughs> Oh my god, that's cold. It's cold. The walls are actually made of ice. So you can see the handprints. It is actually an ice wall. The whole area, that is actually cold. It's climate controlled. Sorry, it's taking some time to do that there. Yeah, it's climate controlled. It's actually frozen ice in what we're walking through. How much bigger they are than like... Oh yeah, compared to the other one, you yeah. can see the double the side. The only bigger one is the emperor penguin, which is really big. But I'm not aware of any who's holding an emperor penguin. But well, look, they're weird birds. They are weird birds. You don't see its feathers. No, it's because its feathers are designed to... feathers. Its feathers are very closely packed to keep it warm. Look, it's so cute. It's got so different patterns of like... Orange and yellow. Yeah, this definitely. one is cool. It's a bit rusty. Yeah. Rasta, <laughs> it's Rasta penguins. actually flowing water for them as well, which is really cool, he has to swim. Go little puffin, go! <laughs> He's going for it. So we just finished in the biodome, I think that was incredible, and I'll say a bit more about what I think of it when we actually finished finished, because we've just come to the camp, which is entirely vegetarian, possibly vegan actually, I'm not sure, and 
there's not a single plastic bottle, it's all glass or cans. Breeding that thing for the environment. As if for a place that was really small, you can spend a long time here. It's really good. We have a barbecue sandwich, some matcha drink that we're not sure if we actually like, if I'm honest. And then a coffee as well. Oh, and yeah, a brownie. I thought we had a brownie. So that was the biodome. I was really impressed, I must admit. I wasn't sure if I had to keep my expectations high or low after some of the other biodomes I've done recently, this year. Like, burgers in Holland has been like the best I've ever done, but this rivals it. It's smaller. Burgers wins on scale. But this is equally as good in what it's doing. There are a couple of smaller things I wasn't as keen on. I think what we so we think the otters needed yeah. a little bit of a bigger pool. But as long as the enrichment's high enough, you can get away with giving things less space. But I think that probably, especially when you consider the size of a northern otter, northern river otter, it probably had a slightly larger swimming environment than it did have. They had. Um, Otherwise, yeah, like in the rainforest, I think it was the most impressive on both sides and the fact that it was raining and there you could feel a little bit of wind coming through. Very natural. Um, and it impacted walking into the penguins. It's cold, ice walls. But you also realize that the ice is to make an impact on humans. It doesn't actually benefit the penguins that it's there, but it is very impressive. It's very cool. It shows you how climate controlled that room is for the penguins. So they've got ice actually in their enclosure as well. In the end, when you see the area of the penguins and stuff, you also see that there could be a possibility to make it like bigger. Um, but then they choose to make it like look nice for the public there instead of like making a bigger enclosure. Yeah, I think because it's got the puffins next to it as well, and yeah, like Anna says, where the ice walls are and that, you could push the human section back a bit and have those enclosures be larger, giving them either slightly larger pools or just more space, maybe for the puffins to fly a little bit more. So I think maybe too much space was given to people in that area. We also saw basically that like basically like you have two main sections that are like bigger, tropical forest yeah. and the other one. The Cape, it's not Cape is it? Is it Cape? Cape of Lawrence? Cape of, Cape of St. Lawrence? No. It is the Cape of St. Lawrence. No, it's St. Lawrence something. I don't think it's a cap. I'm sure it's the Cape of St. Lawrence. We're pausing for two minutes while we assess this. <laughs> Well, that makes my geography look bad. Anna is correct, it's the Gulf of St. Lawrence, not the Cape of St. Lawrence. You know, that's the other large one. I saw night herons in there, that was cool. So basically, you have two large ones, and you can see that there's a lot more space that has been given to the animals there, and then the smaller ones are a bit more... Yeah, it, the standards are a bit low, lower, like the maple... Um, yeah, the maple forest. forest yeah, the otter bit could have been a bit bigger. The lynx bit was tall, but again, maybe could have gone back a little bit. I don't know, the beaver bit looked incredible, but being beavers, you never see them. I think the 3D-ness of the Gulf of St. Lawrence, though, in terms of that you had the bit where you got surface level with the ducks and waterfowl and the seabirds and the cliff birds, and as you go below to look in the tank, you can see the ducks' legs in the surface because you see all the huge fish moving around. That was really impressive. Yeah, that was really cool. Like, I'm not normally a big, big fan of aquariums. I could even like aquariums, but they don't do a huge amount for me compared to normal zoo. But that was done in a way where you had not just the fish but the birds mixed together and like you see the diving ducks going down. That was very impressive. I really Tropical enjoyed that. forest was really impressive as well. That was the best. Like also like you really it really felt like we were there. Like yeah. I guess like if you want to go in there like for the day I would recommend like having short sleeve below like your jumper and then a coat on just to be able to go through the whole different like environments yeah, that you're getting in one change. day because like the temperature change was like difficult for me. Yeah, I had to take my jumper off going into the rainforest <laughs> but it was warm. But I think it So is... it was really impressive to recreate that type of environment so yeah. well. That is it, yeah, it's very that, mm. that's what biodome should do. And I bet there's more of these for helping conservation. It's rain and the rainforest. Yeah, that was really cool. Chelsea keeps the humidity up as well. I think it is a small biodome, a small zoo. But I think you can spend longer here than maybe I first expected from what I knew. If you take the time, if you're really interested in animals, you can really take the time to look at each little three area. Three hours and a half, I think, container. Yeah, and there are plenty of animals we didn't see. Beavers are kind of expected to not see, but we didn't see the sloth. We didn't see the long-tailed ducks. I have no idea where they were hiding. 
but yeah, there's lots to see. You spend a lot of time. You could probably walk around twice and be quite happy to see a new animal, I think. We didn't, but I think you easily could if you missed up on the way around and you wouldn't feel like you're wasting your time. The other thing is like you only get refreshers and like fruit and everything like that at the end if you exit the bigger dome. So if you know that you're going to need something like this and you don't want to leave too quickly then pack it in your bags. Yeah, that was my one bit disappointing. We did the first bit in the rainforest. I was like, I'm hungry. It's like 12 o'clock. Let's go get a snack. Head towards the cafe and there's a little sign saying once you leave you can't come back in. Uh, so I can't go to the cafe to get like food and drink and then come and enjoy the rest of the exhibits. I have to finish the whole zoo before I can go get food and drink in the cafe. I feel like it's a financial opportunity missed. So yeah, really recommend it. It was a fantastic zoo. I definitely recommend coming to it, yeah. Yeah, it's very different. Very quick. It's not just a zoo, it's quirky and I like that. But quirky in a very good way for the animals. And if you're not just about like interested about animals but also about the plants, they tell you a lot about the plants as well on the app. Uh, yeah. Oh, which is cool. Yeah. So thank you for joining us today. We had a fantastic day at this zoo, I must admit, and we're doing the Botanical Gardens tomorrow, which is both the Botanical Gardens, which look gorgeous, and a light event in the evening again. So a second light event of this holiday. So I'm very intrigued to see what that's going to be like. We'll see you for that.